Thanks a lot. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ross Schaefer. Now, even though I'm a stand-up comedian, what you and I do is very similar. Our livelihoods depend on how well we treat our customers. And in my case, if I don't give those people plenty of what they pay for, laughs, they won't come back. And I need them to come back. I need them to tell other people that I'm really funny so I can build my audience, build my customer base. Just like that old birthday wish, many happy returns, that's what I want. Many happy return customers. Now look, I've got some time before the second show. Why don't you come with me and we'll go on a little tour of all the places I like to do business with and some that I'll never visit again. I think you'll see that there are six key ingredients to getting many happy return customers. Now the first one is to make a good first and lasting impression. The way I do it is smile, make direct eye contact, and then dress well enough so that the audience knows that I respect them. Think about the places that you eat, shop, and do business with. If you get a bad first impression, are you likely to go back? Probably not, because whether we like it or not, we are brutal in our judgments when it comes to customer service. If they are nice to us, if they're rude to us, if we feel inconvenienced or if they're glad to see us. Talk about bad first impressions. This flyer was on my windshield and my car needed a tune-up, so I thought I'd take it in. Hey, Bobby, check the rotors and pads on that job. It's going to need them, okay? Good. Uh, excuse me, I, I wanted to get a uh, tune-up here. Yeah, of course you do. That's what we do here. Yeah, well, can you get it in now? I said that white one over there. And I uh, you mind leaving your car here all day? Okay. It says 59 minutes in. That's what I thought I was going to... Yeah, we did that once. Unbelievable. That guy acted like I was a nuisance, like I was interrupting his day. Will I go back? No. And I'm not alone. You know, 7 out of 10 people will not return to a place of business if they get some feeling of indifference from either the company or some individual. And that's not the worst part. The worst part is that if you have a bad experience, you will tell eight or ten other people about it. Now, I'm a little ahead of my quota because I'm getting to do this on television. What about bad impressions on the phone? You know in a few seconds when you talk to somebody and they either are in a very bad mood or they're too busy for you. Sprackles rent a car. How can I help you? Yeah, what day do you want it? Uh-huh. Now, sure, we all have bad days when we don't feel well or things are going on in our lives, but the customer shouldn't suffer for that. We should always give a cheery impression on the telephone. Now, the second key ingredient is being informed so that we can answer customers' questions quickly. Isn't it irritating when you're trying to get good customer service from somebody who doesn't know what's going on, and then they can't find anyone who knows what's going on? Can I help you? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm just starting to get back into running, but these shoes look so foreign to me. Uh, what's the difference between this one and this one? Well, this one's got more blue on it. Well, I mean, besides the color, this one has a different heel than this oh, yeah. one does. Oh, it's got one of those see-through jobs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, you don't work in this department normally, I guess, huh? Normally, I work in appliances. Yeah, is there someone who could help me? Well, you could talk to Dave. Dave's a store manager. He's a shoe expert. Great. Well, well, let me talk to Dave. Oh, he's at lunch. Do you know when he get back? Um. Now, as customers, we have a lot of choices about where to spend our money. And all we want is a little attention, some respect, and some answers. Now, you may be very competent in your job and still not know all the answers, which is fine, as long as you can find someone who does. Okay. Um, about how far do you think you'll be running for a week? Maybe 10, 15 miles a week. Both of these shoes are excellent shoes. This one has an air sole, which will give you more support while you're running, but it's made for people who are running over 20 miles per week. It's a little bit heavier. So the second key element is answer customer questions quickly. By giving competent, informed service, it tells the customer you deserve their business. Now, the third key element can be a lot of fun. Create personal relationships with your customers. I do it in my act. Right, what's, what's an example? I ask people their names. I ask what they do, where they're from. And when they answer, I really listen. Why? Because I want them to feel involved in the show. I want them to feel we're creating a relationship. Think about your own personal relationships. You show interest in them because you want to see those people again. Well, customers are people we want to see again, too. It's just the same. So that's why it pays to learn their name and recognize them when they come back to see us. It's just like the theme song from Cheers. You want to go where everyone knows your name. That's all any of us want. And that's what they do at my grocery store. Hi, Ross. Are you looking for something? Jane, I can't find the toothbrushes. Oh, we moved them over to aisle 10. Without my authorization? Next time we'll check with you. Okay. So how's your dad's recovery going? 
Oh, he's doing fine. Thanks for asking. He uh, he is annoying my mother, though. He's got this little bell that he oh. rings every time he needs something, so she's running pretty hard around the house. Well, as long as he's ringing that bell, he'll be just fine. Yeah. Here's the toothbrushes. Um, oh, hard man. or soft bristle, which do you prefer? Um, I think soft. Okay, well, what my recommendation would be would be this one. Okay, now, don't move these again without I, telling me. I sure won't. Okay. Glad to help you, Ross. Thanks. So there it is, the final ingredient. Thank them for their business and then value their feedback. Now, I used to be a game show host, so I love quizzes, and we've talked about six key elements to great customer service. How many can you remember? First, make a good first and lasting impression. Smile, make eye contact, and dress respectfully. Be friendly on the phone. No matter what mood you're in or how bad you're feeling that day, don't let it show to the customer. Second, answer customer questions quickly. And if you can't help them, find someone who can. We got the customer in the door, now let's give them confidence that we deserve their business. Third, create personal relationships. Use their names, ask questions, and listen carefully to their needs. And whenever possible, show genuine interest in them as a person. Fourth, give customers more than they expect. Surprise them by going above and beyond the minimum. Write an occasional note telling them about a special sale or an offer they may want to take advantage of. If they have to wait, offer them coffee, the telephone, a magazine, or a special discount to show that you're sensitive to their inconvenience. Fifth, when there's a problem, resolve the conflict quickly. Show the customer that their problem is important to you and that you intend to solve it to their satisfaction quickly. Never argue with an angry customer and do everything within your power to make the customer happy before they leave you. And finally, thank the customer for their business and value their feedback. By asking what you can do to serve them better next time, you'll demonstrate that their comments and criticisms are important to you. Now do you see why I like the old birthday wish many happy returns? That's the goal we should have with our customers. Uh, speaking of which, I have some waiting. So I'd like to wish you many happy returns and many happy return customers.